video today. This one's uh, this one's going to be about my solar system in my RV, which uh, I've had for uh, I think about four years now. I put it I put it in about four years ago. And if you like to dry camp, if you don't like to camp in places where there's uh, electrical hookups all the time uh, and want to get out away from everything, uh, the solar system is a great way to go because if you if you do the calculations correct and you design a system that uh, meets all your needs, you just you will not run short of power. Um, you know, within reason, you're not going to be able to run your air conditioner. Let me put it that way. But uh, pretty much everything else, you can you can design a system that will work uh, for you know reasonable electrical use. So I want to show you what I got here. Uh, this is um, my camper, and I have very low. Uh, electrical usage in here because I have this is a, one of the old style refrigerators so there's absolutely no electricity needed to run it I don't have a microwave um, I don't have any high amperage uh, draws in this camper basically what I need um, electrical for is to run my laptop to uh, recharge my phone to uh, charge the laptop to charge my camera batteries um, I've got a little remote control airplane I charge the batteries in that um, that sort of thing but just because I have a low uh, usage here doesn't mean you can't design a system that would handle uh, appliances with a higher draw because you can uh, it's just just probably not going to run an air conditioner or something like that but so anyway I'll show you I'll go up on the roof here and show you uh, what I've got. These are my panels. I've got, uh, I had this one originally here and this is a, a 40 watt panel and uh, I tried that at first and of course it wasn't nearly enough to keep up with with my even my uh, little bit of electrical use. So um, after uh, learning about solar I added three more 50 watt panels so now I've got 190 watts up here and um, I never run out I just it, it works great and <clears throat> the other thing is uh, I want to show you how these are mounted here uh, luckily for me I had this uh, I had this luggage rack up here already so I just decided to mount the panels to that and um, what I did was I built a framework out of uh, out of um, angle iron, just aluminum angle iron here. Um, and uh, I got some bracing here. So basically all these panels are uh, bolted together. And then they're reinforced with this uh, angle iron to make sure it all holds together and doesn't come loose. And then the framework extends out down past the bottom of the panels here. And the reason I did that was that uh, originally I had the pan panels mounted uh, 90 degrees in this direction so that they were over here. And um, I wanted to be able to uh, tilt my panels up and uh, when they're tilted up and I have this vent cover open, I didn't want the uh, shade of the vent cover hitting the panels. So by extending that out six inches or so, when the panels were tilted up, the bottom of the panel would be about this much higher and uh, more less likely to get shaded by the vent cover when it was up. So that's why I did that. Now, <clears throat> the way these things tilt is... Uh, I just got some L brackets and I bolted them to the framework here. There's one right here. And then I bent them around the luggage rack. And you can see I've done that all the way down here. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. Uh, and then, so when I want to tilt them, I just, I've got uh, a hold down here. I'll show you how this is. I've got this 
which uh, just makes sure that it can't come up higher if you know for it take a one heck of a windstorm to get it to come up but just in case I wanted to uh, make sure that it couldn't when I'm driving so when I get get ready to lift these up I just pull this out and then just uh, lift them up like this and then I've got these two struts here they're uh, they pivot back here on the luggage rack and then they bolt into the side here one over here and one on the other side and that just holds them up and uh, I mostly camp in the winter so uh, the Sun's angle is low in the winter and if you can tilt your panels it's a huge benefit for uh, getting more out of your solar panels in fact I uh, was camping one time and I did a, a little uh, measurement I had the panels uh, down and I was looking at my meter inside to see how many amps were coming through and then I tilted them up and uh, went back and looked at it again and when they were down they were only collecting 59 percent of what they were when they were up so that's uh, that's huge that's that's a big difference just uh, just from tilting now <clears throat> so what I'm doing here is I'm just showing you what I've got and uh, I'm not really giving you all the uh, all the little details but I've got a website and uh, you can go there and it'll give you everything you need to design your own system and figure out exactly what you need uh, depending on how much power you think you're going to use and, and all that and it'll explain everything and that is rvsolar101.blogspot.com so uh, go check that out if you're interested in building your own system and uh, read through that it's nine pages of uh, information all kinds of information on panels on uh, charge controllers batteries wiring uh, the whole works so um, check that out <clears throat> I'll put a link or a link to it down in the uh, description too but anyway so uh, I've got the wires coming out of here they uh, basically just are wired in pa parallel all the panels and they come through here this is four gauge wire which is kind of overkill but heavy wire is better um, uh, and, and that's all explained on uh, RV solar101.blogspot.com but <clears throat> so it comes out here goes up into the air or uh, the refrigerator vent and goes down into the vent and you can see it here these are the solar uh, wires coming down through here and uh, you can see there's a fuse uh, or a little breaker wired into the system here so these are going down and they're going into the charge controller which is down below and this is the charge controller here this is a Morningstar TriStar TS45 it's a PWM uh, which means pulse width modulation um, charge controller and that is the algorithm that the charge con controller uses to charge your batteries and that is uh, all explained in the um, rvsolar101.blogspot.com um, PWM is a good thing to have uh, MPPT is another another one which you may or may not need uh, you, you really got to do the math yourself to see if it's worth it uh, for some people it is and for some it isn't but um, for me it'd be a waste of time but um, MPPT is quite a bit more expensive or at least it used to be it may be uh, maybe getting closer these days to PWM but um, anyway so the uh, solar wiring comes up into here into the charge controller hooks up in there and then there's uh, output wires that go from there to the battery and then uh, this here is just a shunt that is uh, needed for my um, my meter so it can measure the amps um, and that is this uh, trimetric meter here this is a 2025A and it will tell you how many volts you've got currently in the system uh, 
how many amps are being used right now and uh, it's, it's jumping around because I've got a lot of shade up there there's I'm under some trees and the sun is filtered so that's just kind of jumping around but um, it'll tell you that it'll tell you the percentage uh, that the batteries are charged and um, it'll tell you a bunch of other things too um, how many amp hours you are from full <clears throat> it's a it's a great meter uh, you don't have to have a meter but it's it's good to know what's going on with your system so you can tell how low you are or how close you are to being charged um, how far you know how many more amp hours you need and how many you can figure out how many you're using uh, you can figure out how many amps uh, different appliances use and so it's really helpful for that but um, so anyway then from there it goes into these other four gauge wires and it goes to the batteries and that goes under there underneath here which is my water tank is here the wires run through here and then it goes over to the batteries over here and it looks like those are getting need, getting ready to be need to be cleaned but uh, anyway if you can see in there I've got two uh, six volt golf cart batteries and they're wired in series and uh, <clears throat> that works pretty well for me 12, two 12 volts would probably be just fine too I, I could probably get by with one battery because I, I, I just don't use that much power but it's nice to have two because um, you know every once in a while I'll have people come over and we'll plug in a couple of movies and uh, you know I just don't even have to worry about it uh, when I've got this much uh, battery storage but anyway that's the system uh, I put it all together myself bought the pieces individually from different websites and uh, it's really worked out well I, I never run out of power as I said and um, <clears throat> really glad that I put it together and you know when I did it they were a lot more expensive than they are now it cost me about eight or nine hundred dollars to put that system together and I think you can do it now for maybe four four or five or something like that it's the price of solar uh, especially the panels has come down quite a bit but uh, anyway that's my system if you're looking to, to put your own together or even if you want somebody else to build it for you some dealer or whatever uh, go to that website rvsolar101.blogspot.com and read about it so you'll know what to expect and uh, you'll know that if somebody else is doing it for you that the system they're designing is a good one because you don't want trouble you don't want to pay all this money for solar and then for instance have the panels be shaded by your air conditioner or or vent covers or that sort of thing or they use wiring that's too small or that sort of thing anyway that's all covered on the website so go check it out okay happy camping